I'd just like to begin by, uh, as usual, um, uh, acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting and to pay my respects to any elders past and present. And also to um, thank James and the team uh, for what is a fabulous conference. So as you can imagine, after I won't say how many decades of experience of doing conferences in one way, shape or form, I've got to say that um, this is one of the, the friendly, friendliest um, conferences and one where you really get that sense of the community here in Australia and um, hold on to that. Um, certainly I'll be doing my bit to make sure that we hold on to something that is really special as we grow, uh, grow it up. So I was really um, pleased to um, be invited um, by James to um, present today. And, and of course, Victorian Government is a major sponsor of this event and very pleased uh, with, with that uh, decision. So, and particularly when James came to speak to me, he said, well, Amanda, we want to do this conference um, that brings together, you know, two key policy areas, if you like. So energy and, uh, and quantum technologies and how, you know, we all know, uh, and um, there are posters um, presented here, but just from our general activity in the community, we've got this huge challenge uh, with energy and how we are going to um, meet our energy desires or and, and basic needs. So how can we bring these two areas together? Uh, I don't have the solution yet. Um, the solutions or the many different approaches to solutions are out there with you. And I hope that this event has enabled you to uh, learn something and meet with someone who can be a potential collaborator and uh, partner going forward. So I might just continue with the theme of uh, the keynotes of this uh, event um, by being the light relief before you get into the heavy technical stuff. Um, but to call out a few things that uh, I, I really got from Bronwyn's speech this morning and also um, from Sir Peter, and that is 20 years, um, what we do today will be important um, tomorrow as well as in 20 years. We're, we're really part of a community that is building a foundation. It's about ecosystems. It's about engagement, both bottom-up and top-down uh, approach to policies. It's about having test beds for industry engagement. It's about how do we bring forward government as a user? Um, how do we create the supply chains that enable us to be like the suppliers to the Victorian gold rush, and you know they were the ones who got the most out of the gold rush we had over 150 years ago. So how can we build here in Australia not only sovereign capability but the supply chains that make that happen? So these are the threads that I picked up um, from the converse, from the conversation uh, this morning from uh, Bronwyn and Sir Peter, and and they're very much consistent with how we think as a state government in terms of how do we engage with these technologies, bring them on, bring them forward and unlock the economic and the social benefits related to them. So that's kind of my role. So I'm a pharmacologist by original training, so biotech is really the domain that I have the most um, ex expertise in. But in the role of Victoria's lead scientist, because I, uh, I often get asked the question, so what is it actually that you do? And so I've summarised it, and as you'll see here on this slide, which is really to do three things, to advocate for STEM uh, to ensure that we have got the skills in the community and the work that can underpin the future uh, workforce. It's about enhancing university business uh, engagement so that we can bring forth and accelerate the translation of discoveries and technologies into things that people can use that can improve our lives uh, and improve the environment. And then I've sort of got a privileged position because where my colleagues in the department have to care about 
the today and the tomorrow, I can think about the future. And so being able to identify and to, you know, um, to be able to lead work as I have done with the community over the past couple of years around quantum technologies, that's the luxury that I can afford in my role to, um, to work with you to bring these forward and, and present them, you know, effectively as a means of uh, future economic development and, of course, of, of targeting our uh, immediate problems. So I've just got a couple of slides now that... Um, so, so that's basically what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you like... Um, so being a pharmacologist, I often describe it as I build the ligands that respond to uh, the problem or the opportunity, which are the receptors that we're trying to um, enable the, the engagement to occur for long enough that something real happens at the, at the end of it. So this slide is really just to, you know, um, demonstrating that Victoria has a strong commitment uh, to meeting uh, net zero um, carbon emissions. In fact, we initially, when the Climate Change Act was first introduced in the Victorian Parliament in 2017, so over six years ago now, we had a net zero target of 2050. That's since been brought back to a target of 2045. And alongside that, uh, and uh, we have a renewable energy target, which is different, obviously, from the net zero, of 95% by 2035. The reason for that is, and so the Victorians in the room, you'll know that most of our power generation um, is, uh, has, has historically been from brown coal. So there's an extra um, reason for us to, um, to advance a range of technologies uh, that will uh, meet our energy needs in a much more env environmentally friendly way. So, um, so we are, are very alive to the, the policy problem that we have and we know that there is no magic um, bullet. And so on the right hand uh, of this slide, you'll see some of the technologies that we are seeking to uh, pursue and to accelerate the uptake of in order to get us there. So there's a lot of work is going on in the department. I was talking earlier to, um, to David Jamison about, well, what's the roadmap? Well, we've got um, markers in the road, we've got targets that we're aiming to meet and uh, it's a priority policy area uh, for us. And uh, I just picked out energy storage as, as one example that uh, alongside the um, production, uh, whether it be solar or, or wind, uh, energy storage is recognised as a major part of the system that we need to build in order to uh, enable the, um, you know, the supply of the energy requirements that we need, whether that is at an economy-wide level or at a domestic level. So um, just an example of the targets then that we have set ourselves in order to uh, achieve this outcome. So that's the, um, the general, uh, if you like, I just wanted to give you a snapshot of our commitment to uh, alternative energy and how we are seeking to make a contribution to lowering our own emissions and, and also accelerating the development and uptake of renewables. So about four years ago now, uh, I started working with the Victorian quantum uh, community and, um, and this slide really just provides a snapshot of that. Uh, we started over 20 years ago. Uh, so um, just, uh, you know, I, I, just a, a bit of information, I started with Victorian government 20 year, years ago to grow the biotech sector and at that time uh, we made an investment in uh, I, I forget the title of the centre, but David will remind me um, of a, a quantum uh, network at the University of Melbourne. And that has been you know, instrumental in providing the, uh, the opportunity for uh, physicists and quantum scientists to really undertake the work that they have continued to do on their, under their own steam, and which has led to us having here in this state uh, a, a community that we can work with. So my job as lead scientist is to bring these interests together and, and I'll talk a little bit about what we're planning to do in order to develop uh, a strategy for our state. 
So um, one of the first things that I became aware of, and it comes a little bit from my experience in the biotech industry, I often found that people are talking about the same thing but using different language. And so a recent piece of work uh, that we've undertaken is to do a capability map to really understand uh, where our areas of expertise are here from a state level to inform uh, our uh, policy making about deciding, well, where should we play and how are we going to win? Because, you know, if we're going to play, uh, we, we uh, you know, everyone wants to play a game to win that game. And so uh, the capability um, mapping exercise provided us an opportunity to try and categorise and, and um, come up with a common vocabulary, and this is one that uh, we, we arrived at, which is, as you would know better than me, at, at the centre of quantum technologies is a fundamental knowledge of quantum mechanics. And so that's kind of the, the theoretical basis uh, for that really then serves to support and underpin a whole range of different application areas, so those being sensing and imaging, quantum computing, quantum communications and materials. So, so we've kind of sought to create a taxonomy that at least internally we can be consistent with because certainly in policy land and if you're talking to, uh, to government officials or talking to politicians, Saying quantum, you know, people, if you say quantum, then often um, people don't understand that that relates to a particular application area. So I just encourage you to, to um, be specific about when you're using the term, because if someone has got a particular uh, view that is not consistent, you know, you might be talking at cross purposes because they're thinking that you're talking about something else. So this is a place where we started uh, to try and untangle that, no pun intended, um, to um, then work out from that point, from that common language point, what is it that um, we will seek to do. So early next year, so we've got this capability map and, uh, and um, the other aspect of the work that we've undertaken is to not only understand, if you like, the card-carrying quantum uh, capability in the state, but also the adjacent technologies, the enabling technologies that will con uh, convert the, the quantum um, physics, if you like, into a product or service. So, you know, for example, uh, and we've heard, um, I saw the PsyQuantum presentation the other day, I think. So, you know, using the photonics alongside the, the quantum technology to produce the, the product that at the end of the day someone's going to use or buy or, or whatever. So, um, so we've sought to understand that broad uh, landscape and that will, um, so we're now in a good position with that evidence base, for want of a better word, to underpin a piece of work that will enable us to, uh, to develop a refined strategy to determine uh, where Victoria should play and how to win. So um, these are the four elements and policy directions that uh, we are planning to undertake. Um, these are very, very similar to the ones that you've heard about already from Cathy Foley and from um, Sir Peter. At the end of the day, um, these are the different areas that governments seek to, um, to pursue um, in line with the role of government to support the science. So we can't undertake the science. That's, that's where you come in. You're the ones who, under, who, who do the excellence in research that we then seek to create the environment around, uh, around which that excellence in science can be translated into economic and social uh, benefit. So um, we'll be working within this framework with the Victorian community and for those um, um, here today who are from Victoria, we'll be knocking on your door uh, to participate in a workshop early in the new year so that we can uh, really start to mine the intelligence that you have and, and seek to put some detail around these four different um, areas of activity. So. Um, 
what is clear from the work that we have uh, done to date is that there seems to be a, a position here for us in terms of materials and the applications of quantum technologies. And uh, so that cuts across both on the computing side, but sensing and imaging in, in particular is a strength here. And, um, and so we will be seeking to, uh, to uh, pressure test that and, and also to hear from you whether there are other areas of um, expertise that are relevant and important and that are special that we can uh, either uh, lead on here as a state or you will notice on the fourth pillar there, it's, it's really important that we contribute at a national level. And, uh, and so many of you are from around Australia or um, internationally. So we, we know that we can't do everything that good science, good industry development depends on engagement with others uh, from other jurisdictions. So we're very committed to contributing to the national quantum strategy alongside um, really the global efforts to, to develop and, and um, solutions out of this technology for uh, our um, requirements, whether that be economic or environment. So Peter talked about um, ecosystems, really important. Um, it, it's about excellence in science and it's, it's important that science happens when people have access to the tools and the technologies that they need uh, to undertake that research. So, um, so we are firm believers in ecosystems and in fact that's arguably what we've done over the last 20 years in biotech, which is the area that I've been uh, mostly dealing with. And then attracting uh, local and international partners is key to that. And um, as Scott has said, we've invested in inflection through uh, Breakthrough Victoria and also in uh, quantum brilliance. So um, how do we know that this is the right approach? How do we know this works? Uh, this slide is really the, um, that of a, a report that I uh, published uh, two years ago and it really tells the biotech story. So 20 years seems to be the magic number. 20 years ago, we really embarked on a strong biotech agenda in uh, this state. And these are the economic outcomes that have been the product uh, of that uh, focus. Oops. Uh, let me go back. Can we? There we go. So what did we uh, invest in? So we invested in discovery research. Uh, we did a little bit of that. The primary funder of uh, science in Australia is ARC, and in this case, NHMRC. And so we did a little bit of that um, because we, and the reason we did that is to build on the Commonwealth funding of this um, activity, because we know that to attract international interest and, and collaboration, you need excellence in science. So, so that was why we um, invested in that area. Platform technologies, so we've been um, uh, a major investor in NCRIS facilities and, and other non-NCRIS facilities because it goes back to the point I made earlier about having access to the tools and the technologies to do good science. Product development and commercialisation capabilities, so these were things that were not, are not typically funded by federal um, science agencies and this is where a state government and we're similar to state governments in New South Wales or Queensland, we invest in those translational capabilities that enable the discovery to happen and, and go into uh, clinical, in our case, clinical testing. And then it's really important that people talk to each other and industry and academic networks are um, so important. So we've got the data that supports that this approach works and really what I'm keen to do is to apply that now to the quantum technology field uh, and to understand the various pieces of that and how that, you know, what does that, uh, what do those pieces look like? What's the picture that emerges that uh, for, for Victoria? And I'll just finish um, on this slide to show you um, not only have we done that with the 20 years of investment that we made um, starting in, in the year 2000, but most recently we've been able to rapidly activate that, that base so that when mRNA, which again, you know, is a technology that's been around for a very long time but really didn't have its moment in the sun, when that became evident uh, around the, the pandemic, we were able to mobilise uh, our ecosystem 
build the pieces of the ecosystem that we didn't already have. We've attracted Moderna. There is a 100 million uh, dose facility currently um, uh, under construction down at uh, Clayton. And, um, and we've announced also uh, a major collaboration uh, with BioNTech. So can it work? Yes, it can. And really, uh, I'm keen to work with both Victorian, uh, national and international players to uh, adopt this recipe and roll it out uh, in the field of quantum technologies. And in particular, given the urgency we have around um, energy and climate, I uh, think that that would be a brilliant way in which we can galvanise interest and investment by addressing a need. And I think it was Sir Peter uh, who said that we really need to demonstrate the benefits, show politicians the reason why they should make an investment. And if you can help them solve a problem, then that's half the battle in terms of getting the funding that you need to do the work that you do. Thank you. We'll take a couple of questions, if there are any, for Amanda. Uh, not a question, but I thank you very much for uh, mentioning the pioneering state government investment in Quantum Communications Victoria, QCV, as it was called. And I think there are still people in this room today who, including myself, who got started on the quantum technology path that was enabled by that investment. So it, it was, it's paid off uh, very well over the yeah. years. So thanks again for mentioning Okay. No worries, David. Any other questions? I might just say thank you very much um, for sponsoring this event and really appreciate it. And um, on behalf of, of um, uh, James and CSIRO, we really appreciate uh, the Victorian government uh, making this important uh, uh, conference possible. So thank you very much. Thank you.